Welcome everybody to the Candle Enthusiast. Actually, this is, aromatically speaking, my secondary channel. And this is the new home. This music is really dipping into retro territories, which I usually like. But I don't think it sets the tone or the mood for the moment. Welcome, essentially, to Aromatically Speaking. This is my secondary channel. This is the home of all of my future candle content. And uh, if you watch me for my travel videos, uh, that's where you're going to find me, the Candle Enthusiast, the main channel. But if you watch me for candle evaluations, what's going on in the candle industry, what I'm burning, uh, just a general discussion dialogue between you and myself, and all of the other members of the Candle Enthusiast community. Uh, this is where uh, you need to be. And I want to thank you guys for uh, uh, the support and getting us over a thousand subscribers because it's this has really been a very modest channel up until this big change starting in 2020. Today we're going to be evaluating two brand new fragrances from a Yankee Candle. Anybody who knows me knows that, I, you know, I grew up with Yankee Candle. I am passionate about Yankee Candle, but I did take a little bit of a break from Yankee Candle. Uh, you know, I think we all need to do that with things that we love from time to time. But the break is over, and I have all of the kajillion billion fragrances that are available so far for this year. We're not going to go over all of them today. We're going to go over two. Uh, just to keep these videos somewhat uh, concise, boxed, and and formatted in, in a way that's easy for you guys to watch on your downtime. Uh, today, the two fragrances that we are going to be talking about uh, is uh, going to be, are going to be, They've been on the shelves for quite some time. In fact, many of you are probably burning them or, or, or already have burned them. But I'm really just getting to them. I have my Yankee Candle bags of all of the, the new fragrances. I'm going to give you uh, my sensory evaluation, meaning I'm going to smell these cold. I'm going to break them down systematically just like uh, you would a glass of wine using just my nose and my senses and uh, that memory bank that rolodex of nostalgia in my head try to paint a portrait for you but we are going to be melting slash burning today utilizing the aroma prison and if you don't know what the aroma prison is just uh, hang out and uh, you, you'll see. It, it's pretty cool. It's something that I've, uh, it's a technique I've been using. I, I kind of created it for myself when I was living in my tiny little lonely apartment in California. And uh, it's, it worked for me and it's worked for me all of these years. And uh, I'm going to continue to share it with you folks. So first thing to do is to pull you guys up. That is always the first step. We are going live today. And just in case uh, you want to skip directly to these fragrances, like you don't want to sit around and listen to me talk and uh, participate in the, in the live chat, after this video is concluded, I'm going to put time codes inside the description below, and it'll bring you right to the point in the video where I talk about the specific candles on the agenda today. And I want to welcome everybody in the house today uh, again uh, most of you folks really supporting uh, not only the candle enthusiast but now aromatically speaking my videos my artistic endeavors uh, i really appreciate it uh, so a big hello but i don't want to spend a lot of time chit chatting i want to get right to this i want to dip into these candles so let's do that now i have you know, uh, in, in passing, seeing the fragrance notes of Yankee Candles, summer, spring, collection candles. But I'm, I'm really trying not to, I'm, I'm putting that out of my head. Uh, if you guys know me, I don't really utilize or rely, even as a crutch, on fragrance notes from any candle company. To me, the best tool at our disposal when 
interpreting candles, when, uh, when, when trying to evaluate candles, is our nose. Trust your nose. That's what it's all about. So let's do that. So again, candle number one is going and uh, you know that's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to show you the the photoshopped picture because there's no way of getting a quality focus on something so small here but the first thing is i'm going to just i'm not going to remove the wrapper but i am going to just kind of peel back that cellophane just a little bit. And we have to jump right into this because I can already smell it. Poolside Oasis. Poolside Oasis. Okay, so excitingly, uh, the first thing that I'm picking up on this candle cold and this is something I always look for, is minerality. Yes, minerality in our candles. Why aren't we smelling more of the earth? What's beneath our feet? The rock, the crushed soil, the fertile soil, the dirt, the topsoil. Why don't we smell more of these notes in uh, the candle industry as a whole? Um, but in this case... I'm not necessarily smelling soil. Actually, I am, but I'll talk about that in just a second. I'm getting that salt, sea salt, salty by the coast, by the harbor, by the ocean smell. And I don't mean all of this surroundings. We'll talk about that down the path. I'm talking about high tide. That air is pouring in, and it's bringing in that saline, that fresh, uh, very uh, sharp, cold, maybe even dry, salty air. You know, those, those wonderful moments when we're on the beach alone, and we're not expecting to have one of these big, you know, uh, monumental internal moments. But suddenly we stop in our footsteps, and we're like, whoa, this is a really... This is a really special experience. As far as the eye can see, I'm the only person, and I'm standing at the edge of the world, and it's speaking to me, speaking to me in the form of aroma, uh, that, that salty water, that salty breeze. So uh, I wouldn't usually dwell on that too much, but because it's there, and there big time, and really the first thing that came to mind. I really want to address that. Um, but soil, um, I don't want to take this over the top because I don't think I literally smell soil types. I don't think, I definitely don't think there's any ingredients in here that uh, are derived from actual soil. But I think uh, because of the mixture of the florals that we'll talk about, a lot of the green vegetation that we'll talk about, and that saltiness, what's happening in my brain, it's, it's connecting the dots and creating this environment of um, uh, uh, a very specific kind of beach. Uh, not, not a super fertile place. Uh, on the flip side, infertile. And if we've spent time uh, in places like the Mediterranean or on, uh, uh, on the, the eastern or the western coast of France, we'll find this chalky limestone minerality. And it just naturally has this salty, uh, uh, briny quality. I mean, it's white. You know, it's, it's like white chalk. Just you pick up a big chunk of it and you smell it and all it is is millions and millions of years of uh, uh, you know oceanic deposits uh, so you find things like seashells uh, in these in the soil but it's all stuff that's essentially been ripped out of the ocean and is now uh, fossilizing or petrifying um, let's say, on this private island, because that's personally where this candle's bringing me. Now, in the fragrance industry, 
there's a language. There's a language to the fragrance industry. There's a way of combining a few different aromas to make us think of a certain thing. It's, 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 it's weird, but it's, it's actually kind of true. You know, we're conditioned to think of certain things when we smell certain aromas. And when I smell this candle, I, I feel, I don't smell, I feel like this is clean. This is fresh. This is something that I'm going to want to, uh, you know, use as a fabric softener. This is something I'm going to want to use as a home fragrance in a living room, bathroom, um, any, anywhere where you want to set the tone to be clean, right? This doesn't smell like a blueberry Hawaiian pineapple cocktail. This is, this is more atmospheric. And the language of clean is, is florals and citrus, citrus fruit and florals. That's it. Think of any fabric softener, any fabric softener that makes you think of clean and go and, and smell it and really break it down. It's really just an assortment of flowers and citrus fruits. And in this case, we have, a, a, you know, the, the, the typical, the usual suspects of beach flowers, you know, the, the, the aquatic dwelling perennial flowers, you know, certain types of lilies. I don't smell lavender, but lavender's usually in, 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 in these kinds of things all the time. And hyacinth flower, um, uh, freesia. Freesia is one, I kind of cheated a little bit with this one, but freesia, I'm telling you, is in like every glade spray product. Uh, if it's called, if it has anything to do with a waterfall or an island or an ocean, freesia, the flower, at least the synthetic form of freesia, the flower, is in that blend. Uh, it's synonymous with clean home fragrance, kind of a, the bathroom, especially, at least that's my association. And what's unique about these flowers is they're not pungent. They're not like a, a stargazer lily. They're not like a, 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 a gardenia flower, something really potent or even musky like a rose. Uh, to me, this is more of the fruitier spectrum of flowers. But if I just said flowers, it would be, you know, We'd be doing a disservice here because there's there's something else going on. There's there's the flowers, but there's um you know um a contra uh, contrast uh, I should say a, a, a complementing uh, a green component uh, a vegetation green green grass green um, the green stems of roses, maybe not the rose petal themselves, uh, uh, lush green grass, lemon grass. We can even go more uh, to the herbaceous side. And to me, that's what's interesting. You know, I might just dismiss this as another by the beach candle, not saying that's bad because I really like that saltiness. But I think what's What's happening and what's being illustrated in my head here is because of this greenness and uh, there's like a there's a wooden note. I'll, I'll paint a portrait of that in a little bit, but it's taking me not right to the beach. Let's let's do a portrait. Let's paint this portrait. Uh, we have a, a private island. Let's assume we're the only ones on that island at least we're the only ones that we know of and but we're not sitting by the water we're not sitting on the sand we're off in the distance through the thicket the tall grass you know you kind of go through that grass it's above our heads and we're climbing through and in this little valley this little nook this little hollow in the island we find and here's the magic word lagoon bam 
this is what that green does. Uh, a lagoon is a non-contiguous part of the ocean, so it's, it's oceanic water and rain, but, and it's right by the ocean, but it's inland uh, from the ocean. And that's where we're going to find all of the vegetation. You know, there's a natural... Uh, I'm, I'm speaking from um, <laughs> my own personal experience, and I'm generalizing a lot. But, uh, you know, you have the green vegetation, the, the trees cre creating that natural umbrella from the sun, which allows more of the, 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 the stuff on the, on, the, on, the, on the beach floor to grow. You know, in that sunlight, that direct sunlight every single day, you can't get certain flowers to just grow. Uh, they're, they're, they're just simply going to dry out and die. But if they're covered by vegetation, you're going to find all of these aquatic dwelling flowers and green vegetation. Uh, so just think about those vines, um, those, those perennial plants growing underneath the water and uh, emerging from the surface. And all of these blooms of flowers. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on florals. I, I I'm really not. Uh, but you know, when I smell this, I think of. Uh, you know, we think of. I think of Peter Pan. You know, uh, the the mermaids lagoon. I think of Blue Lagoon, Brooke Shields, and the other guy. I don't know his name. Um, but that, uh, that, uh, that, that private space, uh, a lot of vegetation, uh, a lot of florals, but we're still getting that heavy influence from the coastal breeze. Um, and I mentioned this wood component. There is this, this woodiness that I'm not, it's not a cologne woodiness. It's nothing like a forest woodiness. I really have to be creative here. So think about in this lagoon, we have uh, a boat, a wooden boat, decades old. It's uh, saturated with salt water, uh, but completely dry because it's bleached and sun-dried from that sun. So it's, it's bright white, uh, and we're using it. We have it propped up, right? And we're using it kind of as a tent. And we're sitting on a little grassy knoll by the lagoon. I'm, I'm really, I'm really going for this one. I hope that's okay. Uh, really painting the portrait. But this is what happens. One piece unfolds and my mind just keeps going. Hopefully, um, a candle like this will, will do the same for you. But you can smell that wood. You know, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Yankee Candle uses a fragrance note, something like driftwood in some th in this candle. Um, usually, you know, driftwood, like wood that's been floating around in the ocean and is washed up. Um, that's not a real fragrance or a fragrance or essential oil, but uh, it's a great descriptor because, it, you know, it really illustrates um, um, or communicates a smell with us. So... That and, uh, and, uh, yeah. So if that's, if that's your idea of escape, a lagoon, it, this is called poolside oasis. If this was called lagoon oasis, I think it would work. Pool, uh, yeah. I just, you know, maybe they're going for a little bit of the, the ozone, and I, well, let me talk about ozone for a little bit because I wasn't usually going to say it because I usually don't talk about it, but there's a video I did a while ago where I was with my sister-in-law and we had never been to Malibu, Malibu, California, neither one of us. And she lives in LA and I used to be in LA all of the time, but neither one of us had ever spent time in Malibu. So we went out to Malibu, we drove around, we took tons of pictures, took tons of videos. I made a little vlog out of it. It was great. And we were smelling everything. Uh, up on the mountains, we were stopping off on the side of the road and smelling uh, the, the green vegetation, the soil. We're, we're nerds like that. But then something really interesting happened. There was uh, a sun shower. Not heavy downpours, not a big rain, not a storm. 
It was just, you know, five minutes of solid mist uh, precipitating from the sky. And what was so interesting is that everything that we had smelled prior had completely changed. Just a little bit of that water kissing the earth opened up all of these aromas. And, you know, in that moment, you know, you could exponentially smell. Uh, I feel like all of the, the smells were magnified, but also altered in just a bit. But that ozone smell, that chlorine-like aroma, that clean, fresh air when you're by the coastline um, that was coming through big time. And uh, I really do pick this, I pick that up on this. It, it, it blends in with the saltiness, that limestone chalk that I talked about. Uh, but I feel like, you know, uh, I would be doing a disservice if I, if I didn't at least mention that. So by poolside, maybe Yankee's talking about a little bit of this chlorine action, or maybe they're just making a choice to, to put this by the pool, which is obviously what they're doing. Um, but I've talked about this enough. We need to melt this. We need to melt this. How are we going to do that? Let me show you guys. This is going to be uh, fun. Um, now, the Aroma Prison is something I introduced to the Candle Enthusiast channel about two years ago. And the way this works is I have this hot plate right here. Um, and, uh, and, well, I need this. There's a little saucepan with just a little bit. It's not filled with water. It's just got a little bit of water in there. And it was heating up before. I'm going to continue to heat this up. And I have these brand new cleaned mason jars. So inside of the mason jar, I'm going to, let's peel this back a little bit more. I'm going to take a chunk, not a lot. We won't need a lot, but I'm gonna take a little bit of this wax and put it inside of this mason jar. Now paraffin wax is really messy and it's much more brittle and tough than uh, vegetable wax or soy wax. So I don't want to get too much, but I don't want to just get the outer part. I want to get inside just in case any of those oils were exuded. You see that? That is way more, not way more than enough, but, but by far uh, enough. We won't need more than that. I'm going to put this lid onto the mason jar nice and tight, okay, locking the wax inside. Now, what this is going to do is when I put this in the water, that wax is going to melt. But instead of the fragrance, the, the fragrance oil that is going to turn into vapor, instead of that vapor escaping into uh, the, the, the studio here, it's going to be trapped inside of this mason jar. So when it's melted, I can take this, crack it open, smell it, and get a better uh, sense of what this candle will smell like when it's airborne uh, in its melted, volatized state. So let's keep that in the water. And check this out, folks. I don't know if anyone saw it yet. Santa Claus, where is he? Right there, Santa Claus, Santa Claus, candle enthusiast, t-shirts, uh, my spiritual animal, the candle enthusiast, available at shop.spreadshirt.com slash the candle enthusiast. Let me show you that real quick before we continue. Um, and bam. So make sure you check out the link in the description of the video. Uh, uh, hit that link. It'll bring you right to the Candle Enthusiast shop. But all of the designs, there's many more coming. But I just added the Santa Claus spiritual animal. I am wearing the men's premium t-shirt. Uh, I thought I would spend the extra dollars for the premium. 
uh, but you can customize any of these items the way you want. Uh, toddler sizes, kids sizes, women's, men's, tall, mugs, totes, hats, uh, endless amounts of things, uh, and you can customize them to the color, the trim, uh, any way you want to. You can even put your name on it if you so choose. A little plug there. Um, but let's get back because I want to talk about the second candle while this one is melting at, uh, you know, a French restaurant, an Italian restaurant. It's sorbet, but, you know, if this was like a gelato, you could find this in Italy. It seems like a very foodie-like thing, you know, if you nerd out about food and desserts. Uh, mixing these two things together seems like a good thing to do. But let me give this a sniff. Well, before we do that, I have right here is, um, uh, you know, there was raspberry sorbet uh, that I actually uh, bought, fixed, and sold. It was a, it was a black band. And I love that candle. I'm just waiting to find a brand brand new one. I, I want to have one that hasn't been lit. But this is one from my collection as well. It's just raspberry. It's, um, it's a very old fragrance, but it um, has been ret retired, I, I believe, for, for quite some time. But let's just give this a quick sniff just so I can have something to compare this to. And excuse the, the, the witch bubbling of the aroma prison okay this is this is a pretty old candle we're talking 20 plus years um the raspberry is still coming through but as i you know remembered and as i would expect this is a, a candy fied and if i should dare say uh artificial raspberry like this is if twizzlers made a raspberry flavored twizzler maybe they do uh, or any kind of soft, chewy, gelatinous, pectin-rich uh, raspberry candy. Uh, it doesn't smell like fresh raspberries. Um, but it has those elements to, when you smell this blind, to bring you to raspberry. So that's something we'll pay attention to with this next candle. We're not going to just see how much this smells like raspberry, or I guess rose, but we're also going to focus on authenticity. This is important, right? Authenticity, or if it's not authentic, in which way is it bending? Is it going into that candy direction? Is it going into that ice pop direction? Is it going into more of a body uh, fragrance, a perfume um, uh, kind of uh, raspberry? And by that, I mean mixed with an assortment of other things to make it seem more exotic. Let's uh, cut this open. Again, we will be smelling that poolside oasis in the mason jar, and we will be reading the fragrance notes. All right, here we go. Can you really hear my sniff next to this microphone? It's like ASMR. Whew, man, there was something that flashed across my mind as soon as I smelled it and I lost it. Um, that's the biggest frustration when evaluating, maybe not candles, but when it comes to evaluating wine, especially if you're doing it uh, in a competitive style. Uh, but the first thing I have to address here is the rose, believe it or not. Uh, there is that leathery, musky rose. Uh, and I didn't think it would be this intense uh, because that's a hard thing to balance with fruit when you're, when you're dealing with uh, a musky you know what I mean by leathery rose, you know, uh, I don't want to make roses sound 
I don't want to ruin the association for people, but think about when you open up a brand new pair of leather boots. You know that smell? Like those leather boots have just been sitting in that box probably for like a year since they've been made and put into that cardboard box. And you open that up and you just smell that what they treat that leather with, uh, but also that natural muskiness, that the real smell of the leather. Most of the fragrance is, is artificial, what they're putting on there, but... You know what I mean. But it's still very pretty. Oh, there's that smell again. Oh, I, I will I will get this. I will get this. But let's continue. Um but it's not it's not too pungent. And I think what would make this rose too big and too pungent would be if it had those rose clippings. Kind of like what I said with the poolside oasis. If it had those green stems, the leaves, you know, more of the rose bush or, you know, when you go to the florist and you just, you know, big trash cans, those big plastic buckets, trash cans filled with the, 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 the extra length of all of the, the green stems that have been clipped off. Uh, that's, that's not really coming through that much. It's really more of the soft rose petal, but still still musky and I got what I was looking for ha -ha. Um, but let's let's move on to the next category that uh, seems appropriate fruit um, do we smell raspberry yes do I smell I, I smell raspberry and it smells awfully darn authentic this smells like fresh raspberries i don't want to use words like super ripe or underripe or um um you know uh you know last week i talked about reconstituted frozen strawberries when i was talking about bath and body works uh, strawberry pound cake check that video out uh that's going to be uh in uh, my recent uploads uh, but this smells just like a perfectly ordinary, ra very fragrant raspberry that we would get at the grocery store. However, there's more. There's always more, right? Um, it's not just raspberry. To get this, th this fully fleshed raspberry aroma, there's a few other additions in there to trick our brains. Other, mainly other red fruit. Uh, and what I'm getting is uh, red currant. If you're not familiar with red currant, you gotta be. You just gotta be if you're evaluating candles or evaluating wine or evaluating perfume or cologne. Um, it's, uh, it's a necessity. So go out there, find it in every form and smell it and taste it. Uh, but red currant, cranberry, and pomegranate. So you see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm talking about more of the more astringent, bright, tart, acidic driven red fruits. So, uh, you know, r raspberry, when we think of raspberry, when you think of a raspberry, do you think of sweet or do you think of tart? This is a good topic. It could probably go either way, right? Well, this is going for me at least, in a tart direction, which makes sense because tart leans towards refreshing. Refreshing leans towards dessert, and this is called roseberry, roseberry sorbet. Um, so we're getting those red fruits in there, and there's this spiciness, there's that astringency, and I think what I was smelling was grapefruits. I'll say this just in case Yankee Candle puts it down, but they usually save this, this description for Christmas fragrances. Pomalo. Pomalo are those big grapefruits. They're mainly green uh, when you see them in like grocery stores. Uh, that really thick zest and the pith inside is really thick as well. But you can smell them from across the grocery store. They're so incredibly fragrant. Um, and they exude the most beautiful grapefruit smell. And um, so I'm not talking about ocean spray, you know, uh, grapefruit splash juice in your face here, but that grapefruit zestiness, 
uh, or even because it's a little bit spicy, you know, I, I, and I'm kind of trying to save my butt a little bit here, uh, uh, hedge my bets, uh, I will say uh, blood orange, uh, not the juice. Uh, that's why I'm saying blood orange, because I'm focusing on the pith, the white stuff, and the zest. That is what I, I probably the first thing I smelled when I picked this up because what that does is give gives this uh, I'm gonna say bitter but don't let that turn you off. Uh, it, it, we all know what bitter is, but in the fragrance industry or in the the culinary industry, you don't use the word bitter. You you say astringent. It sounds prettier and it sounds some more it sounds more sophisticated. So there's this astringent. Uh, perceived smell, uh, but it's clearly th th uh, a bitter spiciness that we would expect if we took a big, maybe not a bite, but if we sunk our teeth into a grapefruit or a blood orange. Let's keep going. And I talked about the tartness have to talk about the sweetness here um and what's going to help me out is the actual name of this candle sorbet you know sorbet is pureed fruit uh with simple syrup simple syrup is just uh hot water with dissolved cane sugar um so it's essentially sweet water uh, if you're making lemonade or uh, if you're making cocktails, simple syrup. It's the stuff that the bartender has in the little plastic bottle with the spout. Uh, you, you mix that together with the puree, which will keep it nice and loose uh, uh, and really enhance the sweetness. And then you, you churn it and then you freeze it. That's what sorbet is. Um, and you can put any other kind of ingredient into it that you want. But... <laughs> The reason why I'm saying this is because there does seem to be um, an enhanced sweetness. You would never smell a sweetness like this if you were just smelling a raspberry, but you would smell a sweetness like this if you were smelling a bowl of of sorbet. Absolutely. Um, and um, um, so with that said, even though... To me, this definitely leans towards tart, refreshing. We're still definitely getting that sweetness, so don't don't get me wrong there. And uh, as far as it being authentically um, sort, maybe I won't say authentically raspberry so much, but authentically um, sorbet. Definitely, it really does smell. Um, like sorbet here and with that rose this smells like a perfume and don't let that turn you off all i'm trying to say is that is if if ladies or guys you know i don't i wouldn't mind smelling like this i would have no problem smelling like this but this is typically what you see in um women's perfume um th this does fall into um uh, a perfume category that rose is tough to beat but we'll see when we melt that down here's a little thing that um, maybe is not a wish but it's a curiosity of mine um, when you when you burn this candle or when you melt this wax it's gonna you know it's it's gonna be warm right you know the uh, if it's warm in your living space or you're standing by the candle, it, it's it, there's a warmth coming from the candle. So it's always hard to create fragrances that are supposed to uh, make us feel cold. And I think that this being a foodie-like candle, you know, rose and raspberry, I think this would be a really interesting opportunity to add something like fresh mint. Like if they had like a little fresh mint leaf, uh, kind of garnishing this maybe they do I would be I won't be embarrassed I, t I can't see from the picture but if they had uh, a roseberry <laughs> uh, fresh mint leaf on that that sorbet that would allow a contrast of the the floral um, because you would have the floral you would have the fruit but then you would have the herbaceous and that mint would give us this 
cooling sensation, natural, uh, 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 you know, uh, cooling through the nasal passage in the passages. You know, things like menthol, right? They trick uh, our brains to uh, think that we're experiencing cold temperature seriously uh and uh it's so it's you know it's a, it, it would have been interesting or if you really wanted to go in that direction i suppose you could just burn a fresh mint candle alongside that but let's go back to poolside oasis let's just go back to the art real quick it's melted state um Let's see if we, there we go. That's a little bit better. So not a lot in there, but all of the fragrance oil that was in that wax uh, volatized, just like it would come out of your jar, uh, is released, or at least most of it has come out of that wax and is in, is trapped in the negative space in this mason jar. So now I can open it up, unlock it, unleash the hounds, and smell this, and smell this, and it's melted state Ooh, hear that pop Whew. flowers for days i haven't even broken the seal of the gasket yet Whew. interesting that there's like a citrus fruit coming through now and other than fruity flowers i didn't say anything about that But with that said, this really does, smelling in this fashion obviously is going to be super intense. But remember, that's like f just a few grams in there. Um, it really does smell like I just uh, like ripped out a handful of um, dryer sheets from like a box of Gain or Febreze. Because we're getting a lot of those floral freesia fruity but still uh, bitter florals here. And what's sad is that, um, well, not sad because let's, let's give this a chance, but I'm not getting that initial uh, blast of salt, ozone, uh, that I was getting on this candle cold. But those are, would be top notes so I'm just gonna blow just a little bit on the, the mason jar there. This is all standard procedure, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I smell the saltiness. I smell that limestone thing. I'm smelling a really big citrus, like lemon lime. Like take the sugar out of Sprite. Um, Big time citrus, the zest and the juice. But what's conquering this candle, and I think what's going to happen is what's going to linger most in your living space are those clean flowers. The freesia, the lilies, the hyacinth flowers. Um, is there lavender? No. Is there tea? Sometimes I get uh, like green tea or black tea or earl gray if it's over cit really citrusy we can make an argument for that but i won't make it too confusing so i think um this is a case where if you really do enjoy those those glade bathroom sprays and that might sound like an insult if depending on what you think about home sprays and i don't mean this as an insult what i mean is if you're into the, the bombastically big florals clean fresh air the language of aroma or the 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 aroma industry if you're into that clean scent fabric softener right here poolside oasis but when we're talking a little bit more of the nuances of the flowers and the green vegetation, the saltiness, Malibu after that, that, that storm, um, it could very well 
eventually show itself, but those are top notes. Those top, top notes are what disappear first. Florals uh, usually are uh, heart notes and bass notes, which you know are going to hang around the longest. So the reason why I don't hesitate to say that this is going to be a floral beast is because I'm already losing some of those top notes. But what do you what do you guys think? Um, have you burned this candle? What has been your experience? And elaborate. What kind of room did you burn it in? What, what temperature do you set your room to? Is there a draft in your room? Is there ventilation in your room? Is there natural circulation in your living space? Do you burn this in your bathroom, in your, in your living space, in your bedroom? Be specific. Leave that in the comments below. Uh, geek out. It's okay. You have full permission to geek out here. I should have done this before, but let's get roseberry sorbet in the aroma prison. Again, we don't want this at a boiling temperature, but we do want it pretty warm. And it's a good time to check out what you folks are doing. F Stephanie Hall with the $4.99 super chat. Hi, Shane. Congra congra congratulations. Congratulations on 1K. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Stephanie's a, a big friend of mine, a um, loyal friend. Uh, she's been watching my videos for quite some time. She's made a pretty awesome Starbucks poster. She, she took a bunch of, of my old coffee bags from Starbucks that I collected through like over a year. And she, she turned them into like a collage poster canvas kind of thing. Let's go just a little bit more. I would probably use a little less if I was doing this for myself, but this is supposed to be entertainment after all. All right, so we have the gaskets. Let's tighten that up. Let's put that in the water and let's just turn the temperature up just a little bit. And who else do we have? Do we have any questions here? I saw Prince in concert in Florida in the 80s. You know, this is what happens when I don't follow the, <laughs> the chat section of the videos. How did that come up? Um, and, and, and Lauren says, love me some Prince. That's right. And Diane says, well, let me see. She's using a green vomit face emoji, which worries me. But she says, Poolside Oasis smells like chlorinated pool in the heat of Florida, a Florida summer. Uh, well, I think t to some folks, that would smell great. So I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. Fine. I'm trying to tone down the volume of my voice a little bit. I figured since we were starting, aromatically speaking, in a new fashion, I thought I would do it in a, more of a, a less of this and a little bit more of like this. A little bit more of like, it's just me and you. Uh, if that doesn't sound creepy, it probably sounds creepy. <sighs> I always ruined the good things. All right, come on, melt, melt up on me here. Um, so... Uh, let me just demonstrate a little bit about uh, what Stephanie Hall just did here. Uh, because we hit 1,000 subscribers, we can now not only uh, monetize my videos on Aromatically Speaking. Candle Enthusiasts, we're, we're 4,500 subscribers. So we, we have ads on there, which generates revenue from the advertisers who pay money to Google, then to YouTube, and then the pennies come to, you know, the, the YouTube creators. Uh, but if you don't have a thousand subscribers, you can't put ads on your video. And there's a bunch of other things you can't do. You can't do mobile lives. And whoa, we're getting boiling here. Uh, but you also can't do, um, you can't do super chat. So uh, because of the extreme limitations that YouTube is putting on creators uh, for family-friendly content, 
doing everything I can to be creative, to offer ways to help, uh, I think in a, in a very fair way, raise money for future videos of not only the candle enthusiast, but here, uh, Aromatic Adventures. Uh, we had some very generous folks donate some money uh, to the cause. And this resulted in this box of Bath and Body Works, which will be uh, providing some content in the near future. All right, this is good enough for me. Let's go back. We have Roseberry Sorbet. And again, I'm realizing I didn't go over the fragrance notes yet, but we will do that. Maybe if I turn down this light, I won't look so unhealthy to you, Omega. For whatever reason, it doesn't want to go down on me right now. Let's give this a sniff. Wow. That sounded... That must have looked like the most fake response ever, but that was a very genuine wow. The rose has taken a back seat. It's not gone, but it has taken a back seat and in such a great way uh, because, you know how I was saying this was, uh, you know, it kind of was fit into that perfume category. No, man, this is really going into uh, that frozen dessert direction now. And that grapefruit's coming through, that spiciness. The juicy red fruits, even the sweetness is, is, is breaking through, break on through, you know, through the other side. And it's breaking through. It's, it's, it's coming through. It's shattering a little bit of that facade of tart, tart, tart. We're getting the, the, that, that sweet fruit juice or that simple syrup. This smells like, definitely, like you had um, a, a, a raspberry sorbet infused with uh, a little bit of grapefruit zest, garnished, uh, but so that's not infused, but then infuse it with uh, rose petals, maybe even rose water. Uh, I wouldn't just say rose water, that would be convenient. That's probably what a lot of people would do, but maybe a steeped uh, rose petal kind of thing, or finally, um, finely uh, chopped, minced uh, rose in that, in that dessert. I have to get my nose a break. That is a big, big, big aroma. Not super intense though. That uh, poolside oasis for Yankee Candle is going to be a medium plus high intensity candle. What that equates to as far as throw, I don't know. We don't do that on this channel, at least not yet. Um, but it's a, it's a high intensity candle, or this is uh, more of a, t a typical uh, of Yankee Candle, a medium, again, this is subjective folks, but this is how I would uh, classify a medium intensity aroma for Yankee Candle. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything else I can say to elaborate on that I haven't talked about um, other than it it is coming that sweetness is bringing it to that candy side of things but in a great way a great way what do you guys think of roseberry sorbet there it is folks um, Poolside Oasis and Roseberry Sorbet. What are your thoughts? Um, share them in the comments below. But also, I have all of the other candles by Yankee Candle for summer and spring, the scent of the year. Uh, and I also have a lot of Bath and Body Works candles to talk about and a lot of small batch candle companies and even some luxury 
candle companies to talk about in the near future. So here's here's the deal. In the description below, let me know what you guys want to see. If it's a Yankee Candle specifically, list that and tell me why. Uh, if it's a company, list that and tell me why. Uh, because I'm really, uh, I have my hands on the steering wheel, steering wheel here, but I'm, 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 I'm taking your guys' lead. I'm letting uh, you guys uh, help me pave the path here. So please share with me what you would like to see in these videos. I promise they will all won't be lives. Uh, I will be doing edited videos, but I won't be getting rid of the live videos either because I think this is a really fun format. I really enjoy it. Um, and um, oh, and the prince, the prince reference, uh, raspberry uh, beret. I can't believe I didn't get that. That would be an awesome candle. Uh, give me your, come up with your favorite prince inspired candle. Uh, in the comments below as well. I want to thank y'all. Thank you all for joining. I want to thank Stephanie for the super chat. Uh, I will be doing more videos. I want to wish everyone a happy Valentine's Day, or if you despise the holiday, uh, heck it. Uh, but um, uh, I want just uh, I want to extend uh, again my my thank you for always supporting me uh, while I. Uh, go through these transitional periods where I'm trying to find out what is the next stage, what is the next step for the candle enthusiast. All I can say is I can assure you that there's a lot of fun, really fun and new things that I've never done before coming down the path. Uh, but you're going to have a little bit of patience with me. In the meantime, there's going to be plenty of, plenty of candle content. Signing out for now. Thank you all for joining. I will be seeing you folks soon. But until then, be good, will you? Could you? Maybe? <laughs>